this week, two things become evident. One, yes, we are moving ever closer to war games. Yes. And I need to shave. Yeah, now you do. I shave. But it's no shave November, so. I shave and I got a haircut, so did I break a rule? I can't grow a beard, though. Yeah. Doesn't matter, you're just not supposed to shave. It gets all scraggly. You're homeless. Yeah, do it. Let's talk about NXT. Yeah. Uh, we open up with Heavy Machinery. Speaking of not shaved. Yeah. Uh, squishing all kinds of people. Uh, most importantly, Chris Payne and Sean Maluda. Yeah. Poor Sean Maluda. Yeah. Poor anyone who gets stuck as the bottom guy on God, the bottom mile. That's, I mean... Yeah, I feel I feel like Chris Payne should have taken that because he hasn't done shit in WWE. At least Sean Maluda has got a name. Sort of. I mean, at least he's... He was in the Cruiserweight Classic yeah, for a day. For, yeah, for a day. So what has Chris Payne done? I don't even know who Chris Payne is until this match. But anyway, yeah, no, uh, Sean Maluda was on the bottom uh, of the compactor, so he got Chris Payne, Dozer, and Tucker... All on top of him, and yeah, he, got, he got Tucker pushing Dozer and Chris down on him. That's a shitty way to go. Uh, so yeah, Neil's Chris and Peace Sean Maluda. <laughs> Heavy Machinery picks up the win. Uh, then we had some, we had some talking stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. Mostly about like this is all like what's gonna happen next week. Uh, Ember commented on Mercedes Martinez comments. Yeah. Saying that if she feels that Ember can't win the big one, then she can meet her in the ring next week. Yeah. So we are going to get Ember Moon versus Mercedes Martinez next week. For the first time ever, according to Morrow. Probably uh, maybe just the first. WWE. Yeah, sure. well, that's that's easy to say because Mercedes hasn't been there that long. Um, uh, we're also going to get... Uh, tag team match between the Street Profits and Riddick Moss and Tino Sabatelli because Montez Ford tried to steal Tino's suit. Again, these these segments between Tino and Riddick and the Street Profits are profiling the Street Profits almost as bad as they did Crime Time. You know, I it's I, getting worse. Yeah, like the 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 car one wasn't that bad. This one, when he, he specifically said, oh, it's your lucky day, I am Tino Sabatelli, and tried to take, of course, like, why, why, why were Tino and Riddick just kind of hanging out around the corner from where the, I, I mean. Because it's a WWE backstage segment. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's kind of like no matter where a fight breaks out, there's always referees within about 10 seconds. Or like when the Miz and the Entourage are trying to leave and Kurt Angle pops out of a random hallway. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Uh, yeah, they didn't take too kindly to that, so they're having their tag team match next week. Uh, we're also having the official face-to-face -face between Andrade San Almas and Drew McIntyre. We had, a, we had an interview with Zelina and Andrade pretty much just saying that you know they they have they have a very good working relationship. They've known each other forever, and Zelina knows that Andrade has what it takes and will dethrone Drew McIntyre as the NXT champion. We will see. Uh, we have Kyrie Sane versus Billy Kay, and a little bit of a preview of what we're going to get in that Fatal Four Way for the Women's Championship at Takeover. Uh, Peyton got involved a little bit, but she wasn't she wasn't too much help to Billy Kay. Um, no. I mean, I didn't expect Kyrie to lose this match anyway, but yeah, Peyton just seemed like she was more of a, more of a nuisance than an actual distraction. Uh, gave Billy the advantage one or two times, but eventually, uh, Kyrie Sane was able to kick her off of the apron and then hit Billy Kay with the insane elbow, and Kyrie Sane picks up a little bit of momentum heading towards. NXT TakeOver? Whoa! Shocker! Um, no, so, to just go and clarify more on Ember Moon versus Mercedes oh, Martinez. Oh, yeah. Uh, not only did it happen in Shimmer, but it happened three times in Shimmer. Oh, okay. At 
three consecutive Shimmer tapings. At wow. Shimmer's 34, no, 43, 44, and 45, there was a trilogy of Mercedes Martinez versus Athena, now known as Ember Moon. So this is the first time that Mercedes Martinez is facing Ember Moon. Yeah. So, but they are not strangers. No. So that means it should be good. Yeah. They they know they know what to expect. Yeah, that was uh, almost that was fifty shimmers ago. Ah, uh, fifty shimmers ago. That was roughly two or three years ago. Something. Uh. <laughs> um. So yeah, uh, things that we're not sure what to expect. Cassius Ono has decided. Hey, you know, Regal, I really want to get back into the title picture. So I want to fight this guy that murders people. I, I feel like the best way to prove that I deserve a title shot is by facing Lars Sullivan at NXT TakeOver. I mean, it's not a... No, it is a, it is a bad idea. It's a terrible idea. Yeah. But no one ever gave credit to Cassius for being a smart guy. He's not, uh... By the way... Good shirt, Cassius. Good nod to your history. You're, you're waiting for the day when Cassius Ono replaces Sheamus. Absolutely. Not to say that you don't like the bar as a tag team. Yeah. But boy, you will pop louder and harder than you ever have. If Cassius Ono replaces Close to. Sheamus. I mean, like, the time that, like... It'll be close second, maybe, to the time Kalisto beat Ryback yeah, yeah. in that title tournament. Yeah, no, you... Where, like, got up and danced around yeah, the group. Yeah, you lost your shit. Uh, but if Cassius Ono and Cesaro became a tag team... Yeah, the Lords of the Ring. Because <laughs> I'm sure they won't give them kings of wrestling. Well, I don't... I, I don't know if they could... I don't know if... I don't know if they could use Lords of the Ring. Oh, they might be able to. I don't know. Is that too... Is that too close to... I don't know. Anyway, yeah, Cassius is going to take on Lars at NXT TakeOver. Good fucking luck. And we also have confirmed that Velveteen Dream will take on Aleister Black at NXT TakeOver. And Velveteen Dream uh, had a, a few words for Aleister Black after defeating Cesar Bononi very quickly with a rolling Death Valley driver. The Death uh, Valley driver bomb. That's what they call it. Ah, no. That's what you're going to call it. I'm going to call it the, the, the Cartwheel of Death. The Cartwheel of Doom. Uh, but Velveteen Dream says that uh, he will get what he wants, and that is to get Aleister Black's lips to say his name. There's so many different ways I expected that promo to go. I hope that the promo package leading up to this is Destiny's Child. What song by Destiny's Child? Say my name. <laughs> okay. Probably not, but we'll see. Uh, a match that we're going to get somewhere down the line. We're not quite sure when. I don't think they actually said it. Uh, Sonya Deville blamed Ruby for both of their losses. Yeah. Uh, both of them not being in the title match at NXT TakeOver. Uh, Ruby's been dealing with an ankle injury after being in uh, Sonya's ankle lock for as long as she was. Uh, and Sonya just kind of sat at, like, like they were, like, two tables over in the trainer's room. And she's like, you should have just tapped out. You should have just tapped I, I, I could, I could be, I could be in that, in that, in that title, title match right now. But no, you just, you just didn't tap out. And, and Ruby's like, well, you would have had, you should have just broken it if you feel that way. So, yeah, a little bit of a war of words between the two. Yeah, it essentially came down to, uh... Whenever I'm cleared to go, which the trainer in the room said one to two more weeks, yeah. uh, I'd love to meet you in the ring. And Sonya said, well, I hope your ankle heals quick so I can hurt it again. Yeah. Because she really wants to break it this time. Yeah. Kind of fucked up. A little bit. But it's Sonya Deville. She's not exactly the nicest person on the roster. No. And then we had our main event, which was Roderick Strong versus Adam Cole. Baby. Uh, nobody at ringside, which was no. I was expecting to see Fish and O'Reilly come out with uh, with Adam Cole, but it didn't happen. Uh, boy, 
Roderick Strong with some gnarly backbreakers on Adam Cole in this match. Uh, Adam Cole, you know, reciprocating with some some good enziguris and some super kicks. Uh, match ended a little wonky. He likes Adam Cole likes to put his feet against people in a hard manner. Yes, that is that is that is Adam Cole's bread and butter right there, <laughs> uh, which is why he made such a good such a good partner for the Young Bucks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Roddy ends up hitting this like super using the top rope backbreaker yeah. on Adam Cole, which just fucking drops them both for a bit. It was. A rough landing for both of them. Uh, but Roddy gets up looking pretty strong in the driver's seat. He's got his back to the to the ramp, though, which is something you never do when your opponent has buddies. Uh, so Fish and O'Reilly end up coming down and dragging Roddy out of the ring. Therefore, Roddy wins by disqualification. Uh, but after a little bit of a beatdown, Roddy's... Uh, yeah, they like they toss Roddy out of the ring, and he gets all of a sudden flanked by Authors of Pain. Yeah, his uh, his, his new run-in pals. Yeah, he, I don't, I wouldn't, call, I don't want to call them friends because I don't think they're friends. No, they're friends now. They're they're allies. If you ain't friends going into war games, you're fucked. You been in war games? A couple times. Did you have friends? Yep. Sure. Uh, yeah. So Authors of Pain and Roddy get in, and they they were they want to start fighting with uh, with uh, Undisputed Era. But before those two teams can come to blows, Sanity makes their way into the ring, and it becomes an all-out clusterfuck of chaos. And it ends with uh, Alexander Wolf. Yeah, fucking dove. Human catapulting himself. That was badass. Uh, and then the ever prevalent, like especially like the last year and a half, two years, superplex from the top rope to the outside onto a crowd full of people. Yeah. And so yeah, we ended NXT with just a pile of bodies, which really isn't a bad way to go out, especially when you're building up the war games. Yeah, which what what will be left after war games is a pile, a pile of, of bodies. bodies. Uh. I don't know. Have there been clarifications on what rules? No, not yet. Have? Okay, not yet. We that did. was the downside so far. That was my only complaint about NXT this week. Was I was really hoping for a. Here's how the war games rules will be. I will. I we will, got another week though. So yeah, uh, we did have a we had a we had a nice long video package which which uh, featured a few people that had been in war games before. Yeah. Uh, we have Goldust, Booker T, Arn Anderson. Uh, all kind of given their thoughts on war games as a concept. So a good handful of war games footage. Uh, so yeah, but there yeah there hasn't been an official word on how WWE is going to do this. Um, so yeah, there's there's potential that they could fucker it up, but I trust Triple H. Uh, I, I I trust I trust Triple H's working relationship with Dusty and his appreciation for Dusty to at least keep it as traditional as possible, despite it not being a four-on-four. Four. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we got one more NXT before we get into uh, the weekend of Houston. Um, we've got a lot of stuff. I mean, Survivor Series keeps changing. We pretty much, get, I think we have our full card of TakeOver at this point now. So, yeah, lots of stuff happening. But, uh down. He's down, I'm down, and we're done. Alright. Cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the links down below. There are so many social media links. And there's a podcast. That's the SoundCloud link. There's also Reasonable Wrestling Fans. Reasonable the W. Like, like wrestling, wrestling. Where you can check out our brand new unboxing video, where you can see us get our bro and buddy, Joey Ryan. Uh, you can also see us get a few other awesome things, like an Adam Cole shirt, and a Kevin Steen shirt. Yeah, Cody Rhodes 8x10. And a big old poster, which is Back to the Future, featuring Adam Cole and Kevin Steen. Wow, so we just told you everything that's in the box, so you don't have to watch that video anymore. Nope, there's, there's, there's more stuff in there. Shh. Why, why shoot? We're trying to get them to watch the video. Watch the fucking video. Do it. Uh, but yeah, we're, there's no extra videos on this channel this week, so you can go back and check out our reviews of 
some extreme changes for the week of Survivor Series. Yeah. Um, Not to mention uh, the fact that it, we're, we have potential more changes coming up this upcoming week. Like, yeah. holy crap. Yeah. Uh, you can go back and check out any news. I mean, we talked Top about... Top five. I mean, it, we, we talked about... What, what, was, weeks. what was that match that they got announced? It's not... not the, it's nothing really big. It's about Wrestle Kingdom and Jericho returning to New Japan or something yeah. like that. We talked about that. You can check that out if you want. I forgot. Uh, <laughs> but for now, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. Peace!